do, do, do. Facebook, we're online. Amanda says hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm still sitting up here. So, let, you know. Yeah, that's the same. Kate says hi. Get comfortable, people. We're here for you. Eva says hi, Sarah. Hello. She didn't say hi to you, Keenan. Huh. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia, hello, Lisa, Marcia, Terry. Elizabeth. Terry. Hello, hello, hello. Michael Cray. Ooh. That's my husband. <laughs> okay. So, Debbie says howdy, how, howdy Debbie, Debbie. Okay. Welcome. Thank you for being here tonight on our special live that we are doing. Um, we are doing a special Let's Make Art Matter for someone um, in our Llama community. Um, if you guys are familiar with the events that took place uh, last month, where unfortunately there were some um, Americans deployed out to get refugees and um, they were killed um, by a bombing. And um, a member in our community, um, his daughter-in-law, um, passed away during that time. Um, her name um, is Sergeant Nicole G. And so we are doing a very special Let's Make Art postcard to send to the mother-in-law and Nicole's husband and family to let them know that we're thinking about them, we care about them, um, and we're so sorry for their loss. So uh, what we're painting today is uh, this Ooh. postcard. And the reason why we are painting this postcard um, is because I was looking, um, I was reading some articles. She's actually from the Sacramento area, which is where I'm from. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and in the um, Sacramento Bee, which is like my hometown newspaper, <laughs> um, they described her as um, a bright light who loved her family, her country, and her job. Oh, and wow. so I thought it would be wonderful if we painted a bright light um, so we can honor Nicole G and her family. So that is what I we are doing that. tonight. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. I know it was kind of last minute, but I'm grateful that you're here. And um, so what we are going to do is we will be painting this project and we will be doing it in six steps. So our very first step is we are going to be putting in a sketch, just a really light sketch so we can figure out where we want to place things. Um, our second sketch is we are going, I mean, our second step is we're going to be doing our sun wash. Um, our third step is we'll be putting in our grassy ground. Um, our fourth step, we'll put in our trees. Our fifth step, we will do our shadows. And then if you want to put branches on your trees, you can. I love those shadows. They're good, right? I like those a lot. And I think what I really loved about this project, I just feel like um, when people are described as like a light, it's more than just brightness, it's warmth. Oh. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you feel it, you feel that brightness, you feel that light. So um, we will, um, uh, Christine just said, did you post their address? So um, we will be mailing this to a PO box and we will put that address in the comments of this, um, unless if there's someone on Let's Make Art who has a better idea, please let us know. But me and Keenan figured that was a good solution. Yeah. We're kind of, we, we were winging that aspect. <laughs> yeah, so we'll comment the address in this uh, video. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm gonna use a bunch of different colors today um, since this is, was kind of a special um, video. I'm not using specific colors out of a certain box. I'm kind of just grabbing some colors. So you use what you have at home. Um, we are going to be using deep yellow, and I'm just going to be putting it on my palette. 
Can they see that palette pretty good? Yeah, they can see it. I'm actually going to fix the focus a little bit, I think. Okay. I'm just going to reach here. So we have deep yellow, pine green. Sorry for the shake. <laughs> it looks sharper, though. Uh, Sarah asks, is this being recorded for later? It's the kids' bedtime. Totally understand that, Sarah. Yes, after our live is done, it will stay on our Facebook page. You can watch it at any time. Right? Anytime and always. Anytime and always. Yes, this will also be saved to, wait, will this be saved to YouTube? Yes. This will also be saved to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm working on signing in on uh, my end so I can comment the address. Okay. Keenan's going to sign in and comment the address. So the colors we're using are deep yellow, pine green, red, sepia, and space blue. So that is five colors. Oh, there we go. Thank you. People, con somebody commented the address. Oh, nice. On Let's Make Art. Thank you. Okay, then I won't sign in. No, Keenan. We're good. And we have Keenan here, uh, working Ke the cameras. Keenan is here. <laughs> All right. So let's start with our first step is, and we will be doing our um, sketch. So I'm going to take a pencil and really light. I'm going to just do my little circle for the sun. And I'm going to try and keep it small. So I'm going to do a tiny little... Oh, let me make sure I've led here. Just a tiny little circle, not totally in the middle. I'm doing it a little bit to the right. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading a comment from Jill. Jill says, thank you for this. Max from my home area was also killed during the bombings. We will be making another painting for his family. Thank you, Jill. Wow. Thank you. Okay, so we're doing a sun. And then I'm going to sketch in my grassy area. So probably two thirds down, I'm just gonna do a line across. It can be wavy, it can be totally straight across, whatever you guys feel like. And then I'm gonna be putting in my trees. So you don't, and when I do sketches before paintings, just getting like the lay of the land down, I never try and get into too much detail, especially because watercolor is transparent. And so you don't want to like go too crazy with your sketches because then you'll see that through the painting. So try and go light. And I'm just going to start putting in trees. Now when you put in your trees, make sure that some of them go into the ground. They don't just stop right at the line because we want to show that they're kind of part of that that field that's going back. So I'm gonna have kind of a bigger tree, another one right here. And you can mess with the thicknesses. I'm just trying to keep it pretty simple. I don't wanna to get too detailed. And then pay attention to your spacing. Our brain loves to make patterns. Um, they're very efficient that way. And so sometimes the trees will be like evenly spaced and the same thicknesses all the way around. And the other nice thing about this project and doing the trees is you don't even have to put in all your trees. Like as you're painting the trees, you can add more or um, you can take some away. Like don't, don't feel like sketches are like the final thing. You can add more. Uh, Terry asks, would you want, oh, she's asking Jill. Okay, we'll see what Jill says. Okay. Okay. So we got our sketch down. Good job. And I'm going to go over the colors one more time in case some of you are just popping on. So we have deep yellow, pine green, red, sepia and space blue and I'm going to be using my round six and round two I taped it down using my magical soft tape from Holbein that I love and let's get going nice okay so I grabbed my round six I'm going to take some deep yellow which is such a wonderful warm yellow it is a great yellow. it's probably one of my favorite yellows and I'm just going to paint around this sun using this yellow okay and then after i do that i'm going to rinse my brush and spread it and i'm just going to paint right over the trees 
because we're going to be painting those a darker value anyway. I recently did a sun successfully. Yeah. It was a larger sun. Uh huh. But I was pretty happy with how it turned out. What colors did you use? Yellow and orange. Those are good colors Thank for you. a sun. <laughs> and then I'm just going to use water to spread that original color out. I want the highest concentration of the deep yellow to be right around that sun. So I even like, you can even go in and drop in an extra hit. Hit? Mm. Is that the right? Hit is yeah. right. Of that yellow. And just keep spreading. And I'm okay that it's getting lighter as it's going off to the side. Maria asked, what do you do with all the tutorial paintings you do? Sell, gift, store, wrapping paper. <laughs> 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 wrapping paper is a great idea. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I keep them in a desk drawer, actually, in my desk. And that way we always have that like original copy if we need it for photos or, you know, Bragging that kind of stuff. Rights. Bragging rights. Whenever Keenan, <laughs> whenever Keenan asks anything from me, I just pull out a painting and be Listen. like, do you know who I am? Anytime Keenan gets sassy, <laughs> Sarah just pulls out the originals. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> okay. Oh, Vanessa asked what kind of paint, watercolor or ink? She said she missed it. Did oh, it? these are liquid watercolors. These are our... Um, in-house brand watercolors, which are Dandelion Paint Co. Um, and we listed the colors in the comments. Okay, so that was step one. And you can see that I have a little bit of like a bloom here with my yellow. And honestly, I kind of really like it. I'm not gonna try and blend that out. I think it's really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna move to step three. We're gonna do our wash on our grass. So I'm gonna take my pine green, and I'm gonna, this is a really, really cool green. And by a cool green, it has blue undertones. And I kinda of wanna warm it up because I want that sunshine that's coming through that light and that warmth to be reflected on the ground as well. And so I'm going to grab a little bit of my deep yellow and mix that with my pine green to brighten that up and warm it up. And then I'm going to add that to my ground. And I'm gonna be painting horizontally with my round six. And use the side of your brush when you're trying to fill the space in faster just because you get a larger like stroke. Now in my example here, I have a really, really, uh, how do I say this, like pronounced line right here. But I'm actually going to soften that line a little bit because I really like the idea that um, you can't really tell, like the, the light is so blinding that you can't really tell if the grass just keeps going. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I don't, I, uh, I don't, as I'm redoing this, I'm just going to soften that edge just a little bit, okay? Okay. And then when it's still wet, wet like this, I'm gonna grab more yellow and kind of near the top right underneath that sun, I'm gonna do another layer of yellow. Virginia asks how my pinched nerve is feeling. Thank you for asking, Virginia. Oh, that's so nice, Virginia. <laughs> it's still achy. Some, if you come into the office, you might find me laying down on my yoga mat to rest and adjust my posture a little bit. <laughs> But if I'm doing pretty good. That's what we're calling it these days. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I felt kind of bad because um, we have someone who works in this store, and she's fairly new. And I feel I felt bad because she came upstairs to ask me a question, and I was just laying on the floor. <laughs> and I'm like, she probably thinks that she's I'm like, just oh like, oh <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> she's like, of course, Sarah, just laying down. <laughs> Okay, so I'm adding that yellow because I really want to brighten up that, that grass. And it's up to you. You can go as crazy with the yellow as you want. There's no rule. Like, you're the artist here. You can decide. Okay. 
And then what we have to do is we, um, we need to put in our trees, but in order for our trees to stay sharp, we have to make sure that our painting is totally dry before we put in our trees. So, I'm going to mix my brown while we're waiting, and we might just like answer some questions or something while we're waiting for this to dry. Does that sound okay with you? Keenan? Yes. Okay. Um, because I do have a heat gun, but if you guys are actually painting along with me and you don't have a heat gun. Debbie did just mention, whoa, I had forgotten how fast Sarah goes. <laughs> so that actually would work really good, well. Good, good. Yes. Maybe <laughs> pause it. <laughs> okay. So for my colors here, I have um, sepia and red. And the reason why... I put red in there is because I think that when you combine red and green, you actually get a really amazing brown. And so I wanted to put green's complement in there to add to the variations of the browns that we can get with our trees. Sepia is a great brown, but it's really orange. And so I like to have like some, some browns that are kind of more desaturated. Maybe they lean more towards the cooler side or the warmer side. You know, I like to have variation. So we can mix our browns while we're waiting. So there's that brown. And then here's like another, see how red that is? Yes. So I'm gonna grab some green, just a swoop. And I put that in there. And now that looks like, that looks pretty good. That's like a pretty that good brown. brown, actually. So I'm gonna leave that. And let's do another third brown. Will this activate that yellow enough to change the color slightly or will it be Will it be uh, not activated? What do you mean? From the background. Oh, oh. Um, so you're saying like, will the underpainting of the yellow affect the brown that we put on there? The question stemmed from, actually Debbie, how she mentioned how fast you go. Uh -huh. Not everyone's gonna have the same amount of yellow on their background, might have less or That's more. That's true, That's true. So if it's, if it's as light as mine, um, like it's not gonna affect this side, but you see this tree right here where that bloom kind of went into? Yeah. Um, it might affect that one. Okay. But that's okay. Okay, so I have like a really reddish brown. I have really like a grayish brown. And let's see what other brown we can get. So I'm going to start with, I pulled actually from this brown. And I have this gray brown. And I'm going to grab a little bit of red. And I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow. Okay, that's good. I have to say this name because it's one of my favorite names I've ever seen here. Okay. Uh, Rockin' All the Time 99 <laughs> says, glad I caught a stream. I've been watching your tutorials while I cro crochet, but it's been tempting to get out my watercolors and start painting again. A hundred percent you need to get your watercolors out and start painting again. Get painting. Have you ever tried crocheting, Keenan? Yes, I have. I am horrible at it. As a child, I had to learn how to crochet for a time. Really? As well as knit. How, and you did fine. I never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I did it like four times. I'm like, this isn't for me. <laughs> I'm not made for this. <laughs> I feel like when I was like 12, my mom tried to teach me one time and I was just, I like got really lost between the, really the turn. Really complicated knot. And I just got like so mad. <laughs> and I was just like, no, but I feel like looking at myself now, I would probably love that. Like oh, keeping yeah. my hands busy. Totally. Uh, Maggie says that she's crocheting right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Okay. Now we're mixing some browns for our trees. Now the other part of this that I kind of want to point out is if you look at my trees that's closest to my sun, they actually are glowing like yellow on the edge that's closest, that's facing the sun. You see this one right here uh -huh. and this one right here. Uh -huh. So I want to mix kind of like an, or more like a golden color that I can use to drop that in when I paint my trees. So I'm going to grab some deep yellow and a little bit of red. And let's do a little more deep yellow. There we go. Like a nice warm orange. <laughs> Jean says she's watching as she's cross stitching. Gosh, I love this. There's so many arts going on right now. <laughs> Amy just commented, she was just like, Keenan had to crochet. <laughs> yeah, I had <laughs> There's to, more there. <laughs> I had to learn, 
I had to learn certain things. I had to read like scriptures in French. I had to like little things like that. Marzi just said homeschool kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, That's okay. Funny. Okay, I think I think we're getting close to dry enough. I'm gonna test it. Um, so I'm literally touching my painting to see if it's dry enough. I don't really think that that's something that you should do, um, but that's what I do. Um, Jenny Ryan says hello. Hello, Jenny. She's been painting with us forever. Yeah, she has. And Sue. 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 Sue is here since like day one. Sue, she's an OG. Yeah, she is. Okay. Carrie says she's watching and trying to avoid her workout. <laughs> <laughs> same. Same. That's why I'm here. That's why. <laughs> same. <laughs> All right. Let's test it. And so a great way to test it if you're not sure if something's dry or not and you're just impatient like me is sometimes I'll just do a little stroke and I'll see how that bleeds. So that bled a little bit too much. That's still too wet for us to paint. Nice. Yeah. Well, Michelle says she taught herself uh, how to crochet with YouTube during the pandemic. Great. Yeah, what a great use of time. Yeah. I actually think one of our sister companies has a lot of tutorials on how to crochet, or maybe it's knit. Ooh. One Big Happy yes. um, yarn company. Yep. Yeah, they're on YouTube and they do tutorials all the time on how to do that. I think they have pretty great tutorials, too. Yeah. You should check them out if you want to learn. Totally. I'm saying that to me because I still don't know how to do. It's like a self-motivator. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know what you should try. <laughs> you should do this. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'll be laying down stretching my neck on my <laughs> yoga mat. Please put air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, Jeanette says she's venturing out and using her number 10 round for this project. Good Whoa. job. Yes. Great idea. I'm a big fan of the number 10. That's my go-to brush. That's a great brush. I favorite. like a 12, personally. Okay. I'm a round 12 kind of gal. Interesting. Um, and... Uh, Ooh, can you, in this downtime, can you say again how you did the browns? Yes. Because browns are tricky. Yes. They're so, my nar narch eminence. <laughs> arch nemesis. <laughs> An arch nemesin. <laughs> we got to remember that. Okay. Keenan is my arch nemesin. Uh, is that what you said? Nemesin. Nem <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to think of browns, you need to think of browns. Like, brown is essentially dark orange, and you can adjust the undertones of the browns, right? So, whenever there are, there's like the hero color, which is the main color, and then there's always hints, usually, of another color underneath. So, I have my sepia, which is a very reddish brown, a great brown. I wanted a more desaturated brown that maybe has more undertones of green or like gray. And that's when I grabbed a little bit of pine green and mixed that in there to get my kind of grayish brown. And then I took that brown that I mixed and add, uh, added some uh, deep yellow to that to make it a little bit warmer. So I have a few different browns going on. Um, Somebody asked earlier, uh, <laughs> Caroline said, dumb question, why don't you just use a brown? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a dumb question. That's a great question. You can absolutely use color straight out of the tube as is. Um, and actually, I was just thinking about this the other day. Um, I was always taught through my trainings in art school that you mix your own colors. So you have, everybody has the same color palette. They they have you get like four colors in school. And then like you very rarely in my art classes were taught to use just those colors straight out of the tube. And that's because when you mix colors, that's how you start to find your own style. That's when you start making decisions about, I love browns with undertones of warmth, or I love browns with undertones of gray. Now you can find those specialty colors, you know what I mean? Like moving away from the primary colors and finding some that are pre-mixed that you can just use on their own and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that I just um, I don't know I was just never really taught to use them straight out so even in just about everything that I do I'm mixing constantly um, and not usually just grabbing colors straight out of well I guess the bottle for our liquid water colors but um, there was a question here and they asked um, how do you know how to do the shadows? 
Mm. So how I decided to do the shadows is I was trying to think of like, so the sun is over here. So then I have to think if, if my tree is angled at my sun and there's something in the way, you see how if you connect a line to your sun, how those shadows angles match. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're drawing invisible lines from your sun to your tree, and that's how you know to do the angles. Oh my like that. goodness. And I then, would not have looked at it that way at all. And that is why you can see it turn. But if the sun was over here, you would match that line, and then your shadows would go like this. You see what I'm saying? What? And same thing. So wherever your sun is, because you have to think of it like the tree is blocking the sunlight, and that yeah. is how you're getting your shadow. So you just kind of have to line those up. That's amazing. <laughs> Does that make sense? That makes total sense, <laughs> and I would not have thought of, like if you, if you picture a forest, yeah. you can remember walking through trees, and you see the tree that... Yeah. Yeah. Life is so strange. Yeah. And then you watch Sarah paint. <laughs> and then you're like, I get it. I now understand <laughs> trees. <laughs> okay. So, let's check. Let's check this brown again. I'm going to go in that same spot. And I'm painting. Oh, and it's staying sharp. That tells me that we're okay to paint. So I'm gonna grab my brown, and then on the trees closest to my sun, I'm actually going to um, just paint the left-hand side. Okay, now I put a couple trees that are right by the sun, and you can see here my reference photo. Those are a very light value, so I'm not gonna paint those yet. Those ones are farther in the distance, and the sunlight from that sun is so bright that it's washing those trees out a little bit more. So I'm skipping over those and going over um, to this one right here. And this one I'm gonna be painting the right-hand side because that sunlight will be strong on the left because the sun is to the left. And also trees are funky, like they're wobbly. If they're not perfectly straight, that's okay. If they bend, that's actually probably more natural than what I have going on here is if they kind of curve. Um, so don't stress out if you have weird like lumps on your tree trunks or if they go a little bit wonky, that's totally how they are in real life. And in nature, we celebrate those things. And so let's celebrate them in our painting. And then I'm gonna take that brown and keep going. So I'm gonna do my darkest trees first. Now your darkest trees are the ones that are closest to the viewer. And that's why they're darker in value and the ones that are farther away are lighter in value. Now you can choose which ones are darker, I mean like which ones are closer to you and farther away. Like there wasn't a ton of rhyme and reason to which ones are dark and which ones are light. Just remember to kind of like switch it up. Amy says, nothing works as well as Holbein soft tape. It. I have it in four sizes. Yes. <laughs> this Holbein soft tape is the best tape I've ever experienced. It really is. Did I tell you guys that when Keenan gave it to me to try, I literally didn't believe him and it sat on my desk for months before I finally opened it up and I was just like what what have I been doing with my and I went back to Keenan like I was just like you know that tape you gave me months ago I'm like I'm obsessed I mean I doubted it too because you never used it it must not have been very good <laughs> like no it's so good okay and mm -mm -mm. And then this is where you can add, I'm gonna just dip my paintbrush. So I had a bunch of brown on my brush, but now I'm ready to put in some lighter value trees. So I dipped my paintbrush in the water with the paint already on it, and then I kind of wiped my brush on my palette over here, so then it's not dripping. And now I have a lighter value. And I'm gonna grab some of that like reddish brown that I have, and we're gonna put in some lighter value trees. And I'm looking now and I'm t I can tell that like 
I'm really not mix, mixing up the, um, the width of my trees. I need to be a little bit more mindful about that. So I'm gonna do some thinner ones. I'm gonna do what, some that are a little bit closer. And you can switch back and forth between the light and dark, like whenever. Missy said she bought the tape. She just hasn't used it yet. Oh, you gotta, you gotta use it. You gotta use it. It's so good. Maybe I'll do like a farther away one, like really light value, really, really light value and thicker. Okay. And then these really light value trees that are right next to our sun, I'm gonna go with the more orange brown on that one because I want them to feel really golden. They asked, where did I get the tape? I got it from letsmakeart.com. <laughs> <laughs> No, the manufacturer is um, Holbein, right? Yes, it is. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, I just had a moment. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, and then as my trunk gets close to my sun, I'm actually lifting up my brush and not continuing that trunk because I want it to feel as if a sun glare is like covering the blocking trunk. You know, blocking vision. it. And then I'm going to do another trunk on this side. So these are like really warm, really light values. Hi Val. Okay. I feel like I need a couple like even thinner ones. Oh, and if you want to switch to your round two for like these really thin ones, feel free. Okay, let's do one over here. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, now we're gonna go back to our first two trees that we really only painted half of them in. And I'm gonna grab that deep yellow, like orange mixture that I already had and paint the right side of the tree. And you can kind of work it so these colors blend together a little bit more, but I really want that tree to feel like very, very bright. Missy says uh, she's still having problems having too much or too little water on my brush. Mm. Okay, so the, the water to paint ratio to your brush ratio is super, super tricky. And it just takes time and practice to get to a point where you feel comfortable and confident in that ratio. Now, just remember when you're getting rough brush strokes, you don't have enough water. And if it's pooling on your, like if you're getting a puddle on your paper, you have too much water. One thing I would say is really make sure that you're utilizing your paper towel. A paper towel is a really wonderful way to help if you have too much water on your brush. So for example, and what's really tricky is because in watercolor, to get a lighter value, you have to add more water. So sometimes we think that means that we have to pick up more and more water to keep in our brush. Oh, sorry, I thought Keenan was raising his hand. Sorry about that, I had an itch in the back of my head. <laughs> but really, like, how do I say this? Like, let's say you want, and I hope this explanation makes sense, but let's say, like, the, your, your brush can hold 100% of whatever kind of mixture. Now, if you want a light value, you do 10% paint color and 90% water. Oh, I love this. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Where if you want a medium value, you do half and half. And if you want a dark value, that's when you would flip it and do like 10% water and 90% paint. And so what, so what I'm saying what that looks like is when you're picking up color and I put my paintbrush in the water and I hit it off the side of the cup, okay? So right now, is it's like 100%, right? So I'm going to pick up a little, I want a light value, so I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of paint. Like I'm barely touching my paintbrush into the paint itself. I'm, I'm just like dipping my toes in it. So I'm only picking up a little. And then when you go to paint, you have a light value, a barely there color. 
Now, if I'm going for a medium value or a dark value, I would get my paintbrush wet, hit it off the side of the cup, and then, and I'm gonna do it a little bit more because I'm gonna be picking up more paint. And I'm gonna grab, and what, I'm gonna grab a medium value, so that means when I hit my paintbrush into my palette, I'm kind of like half like, I'm pressing it down a little bit so I'm picking up more paint on my actual bristles. It's not a barely there touch, it's like I'm purposely picking up color. And so then, let me get a scratch paper here. So now I have a pretty decent value. And then, when I'm going for my, my darkest value, when I really want a strong color, I rinse my brush, I hit it off the side of the cup, and I'm like literally bathing my brush in the color. Like I, the whole thing, I'm trying to pick up as much paint as possible. Now sometimes when you do that, it drips. You see how it's dripping mm -hmm. off the side? You don't want it that dripping, so I'll pick it up and then I'll kind of hit it on my palette and get rid of all of that excess paint, but it's still mostly paint. And now I have my super, super dark value. Wow. Is that helpful? Yes, it is. Okay. I love the percentages. So, so when you think of like pick up more water, you're not adding 50% more water to already a 100% full paintbrush. You're kind of like drying it off and then grabbing more water. And then if that's dripping too much, then you dab your paper towel. You very, very rarely are going to be moving a dripping brush onto your paper. I really only do that when I'm trying to like fill an area quickly just with water or if I'm doing splatters. Besides that, you want your paintbrush to feel in control and so you don't want it to like drip at any second. And so if you've got to use your paper towel to wipe, use the side of your cut cup to hit that extra water off or just kind of use your palette to even dab and get rid of excess paint and then you can move to your paper okay nailed it okay this is so you guys are i'm glad that was helpful that okay was super helpful missy said i get what you're saying ah uh, yes and then she said i see what i'm doing wrong then okay so she found it yay <sighs> success way to be <sighs> my favorite part okay Good job, you guys, you're doing it. All right, now we're going to move on to step five. We're gonna do our shadows now. So, um, and this is where our space blue comes in. So, oh my gosh, look at our field of trees. I know. I just, oh. Look how, you know how you mentioned the hard line up above? Yeah. I love the soft transition Isn't that so soft much. transition? It's funny because I, I finished this and I was just like, okay, I like this. And then I thought, I'm going to teach them to do a soft transition because I think that would actually be better. So Oops. thanks, Keenan. So I'm glad you like it. All right, so I'm going to grab my space blue that I have here and I'm going to mix that with my pine green to get a cooler green. Mm. The fun thing about when you're painting shadows and lights is you can actually play off the warmth and coolness of colors to aid you in trying to um, tell your viewer, you know, what's a shadow and what's a highlight. So if you notice, my highlights are warm. We put yellow on the grass, we put yellow on the trees. Like I want them to feel that light. When we go with the shadows, I'm purposely using cooler colors because that light is blocked. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to grab my space blue, I'm going to mix it with my green, and now I have um, like a cooler green which means it has strong undertones of blue. And then I'm gonna look, I'm gonna angle my brush here. So there's my sun, here's my tree trunk. And then I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I'm gonna put in my dark shadow here. You don't want your shadow to be, uh, when it meets the tree, you don't want it to be wider than the base of the tree because the trunk is the only thing that's stopping its light. And so at that base, it's gonna be the same width as the trunk and then it could spread out. So I'm gonna grab that and then I'm just gonna pull it and try and like if your angle gets a little bit off, it's not a huge deal, like don't. Okay. And that was a really dark value, maybe too dark, but I can always lighten it later. So I'm just gonna keep going and see how it goes. Vera uh, says hi. Okay, hi. Hi Vera. Vera, oh Vera, hi! <laughs> That's Nicole's mom, hi. <laughs> um, and Lisa asks if I'm using the same paper that comes in the subscription boxes, and yes, I am. So it's the same Let's Make Art paper. 
Okay, so then I'm just gonna keep following my shadows, my angles, and I'm just gonna try and do it in one brush stroke. Boop, boop. Now this angle, this one should have been a little bit more to the left, but I'm not gonna stress about it, it's fine. And I'm gonna go with these trees that are further back and do those shadows. And if they run into other shadows, that's okay. That's how it would happen. Like these things are next to each other. They're running into each other. Okay. That looks so cool. And then sometimes what I like to do is like, just kind of like, I don't know, blend them a little. M French says question. Okay. In the intro to gouache video, it says most gouache reconstitutes with water, but my acrylic gouache doesn't. Is there a way to conserve the paint? Uh, so with acrylic gouache, what makes, so that's why it has the acrylic in front of there is because it acts kind of like an acrylic paint, um, which means it still has that like chalkiness and matte that uh, gouache has. However, it has the acrylic base, which means it cannot reconstitute with water. So when you use regular gouache, you can reconstitute with water. It will bring back up like a watercolor. Um, but the acrylic gouache, once it's dry, that baby is dry. So I would say that when you're painting with acrylic gouache, which I love, I have a lot of acrylic gouache, just do small amounts on your palette and don't do a big chunk just in case you don't use it. And that way you can pre preserve that paint a little bit longer. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to keep going. Sarah, the salmon, the salmon are running. The salmon are the running? The salmon are running in Washington. Tree hugging, Buddha, tree hugging Buddhist just told us the salmon. Oh, uh, really? Every year, trying to get me to go to Washington. <laughs> okay, and then I, there's one tree in here that's a little bit tricky. This tree is kind of in the middle. It's right next to our sun. And so what I do with that one is I, I have it kind of go just straight towards us, and then it's going to go a little bit on the right and a little bit on the left. So it's kind of like fans. Oh, so this one is more on the right, these ones are to the left, and this one kind of spreads just down the middle. And again, I'm just gonna kind of blur the edges. It's like a vignette that I'm creating, which is like a shadow. <laughs> well, that's not great. Tree Hugging Buddhist, again, says, sorry, I can't paint because I'm cooking dinner, but I did slice my hand while trying to watch and cook <gasps> no. at the same time. That is not great. That's not great. Maybe slicing May things. Take a few minutes. We do not suggest <laughs> to cook and watch. <laughs> uh, Maria asked, do I ever use black grayish for shadows or always light blue? It really depends on what I'm painting, Maria. Um, for me personally, I love it when there's like a little bit of color with my shadows. I think it just adds like a richness. And the great thing about um, color theory and our eyes in general is even if it's like a lighter blue shadow, it actually can sometimes read as gray to our viewer. And you don't even tell that it's lighter blue until we like call attention to it. So. I have done like pet portraits and animals, like especially when I'm painting white animals where I will do like a gray shadow. But I just feel like it adds richness to do um, more colors in the shadows areas and the highlighter areas than to just go with like a gray. <laughs> Pat says, Sarah and Keenan, I've missed you guys. Are you going to start sharing lessons online again at a regular time? So if you are kind of newer to us, you might not know that how Let's Make Art started is we didn't used to do pre-recorded tutorials. We used to do only live paint-alongs. Which is a lot. Every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. we were here Those painting. I still have a calendar <laughs> reminder go off every once in a while. It's like, hey, you need to get to this place at 7. <laughs> like, oh no, where, why? Oh wait, never mind. So if you wanted to watch one of our tutorials, and you guys might even still see those up on our YouTube mm -hmm. where, um, and it's funny because I see people asking it now, they're like, I see the live, but where's the recorded one? And it's because we used to not do recorded ones. And um, That's crazy. Yeah, it's funny. That was funny. before my time. It started before your time, yep. yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Uh, question. 
rockin' all the time 99 says question can i use tube watercolor paints that have been dried on a palette for a few months Absolutely, those should be able to re-wet with water. Nice. What might be better to do too is because it sometimes is damaging to your brush to try and reconstitute really dried paint because you're kind of like scrubbing it and bristles are sensitive, you know, you want to keep those nice. So sometimes just using a spray bottle to mist your watercolors to reconstitute them so you don't have to kind of use your nice brushes to like bring them back um, might be a better thing, especially if your paints have been drying for that long. Um, I do want to say this, somebody about the acrylic the acrylic wash, Artie Lily here had a suggestion that I think is great. I haven't tried this, but she said, with acrylic wash, keep a fine mist water bottle handy to keep your palette fresh in use, and then mist and stick in the freezer covered in plastic wrap for a short time, wow. and then you can still use them. I haven't tried that, but I think that might be worth it. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Artie Lily's no G2. Yeah, she is. She's so great. Karen Churchill says, so Keenan, did you ever get a paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> a what? A what? <laughs> You mean a candy bar? Yeah. Yes. Sarah gives me candy bars every Friday. You mean the honor of sitting here live Hard with rain. me? <laughs> I get to give Sarah Cray her paper towel. <laughs> That's my paycheck. <laughs> okay. So we did our shadows. I think they look pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with those. I think I saw uh, earlier someone asked like that their uh, is looking their painting is looking 2D. They're asking how to get it to look more 3D. To get anything to look more 3D, more three-dimensional, have form, you need to look at your values. So if you're looking at your painting and your trees are all the same values, then that's a hint. If you're looking at your ground, your foreground here, and that is all the same values, like then you need to adjust them. So that's that's just a quick hint. Of, um, of how to make your painting more three-dimensional. Missy said, I also bought the Arteza 24 empty half pans to put in the tube, put the tube paints in. I don't know what that would, I know she mentioned something about the Arteza gouache. Oh. Oh, she checked, I bought Arteza water-based. Okay. Hmm. Hmm, I don't know. I don't either. I'm not familiar with that brand. Okay. Everyone's saying that I should just be paid in brownies. <laughs> you would be happy with that, I wouldn't you? I would be you? very happy with that. <laughs> Cosmic brownies, here I come. Okay, so now if you want to add branches to your trees, um, you can grab your browns and just kind of do <laughs> little, little branches. I'm actually going to switch to my round two for this. Rockin' All The Time says, I want to know whether Sarah still has the quiet chocolates in her office. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I knew it. I was actually just snacking on them today. <laughs> um, somebody asked, Sarah, do you use other people's idea for tutorials or all you? Now, when I do outlines with reference photos and we're going for more forms, I actually almost always get my reference photos from photography website that are for commercial use. So Pixbay, Unsplash, all that stuff. Um, I actually think people even share them when they find the reference photos, if that's easier for you to look at the original reference photo. Um, but a lot of times when I'm trying to teach like animals that, or like cars or things like that, um, I will base the artwork off of a photograph that we have permission to use um, and is royalty free. So, if that answered your question. Amy said, Wahoo, I made it back. Oh, good. And she also asked how long we've known each other and if we're related. Um, Keenan and I are not related. We're friends. Friends. And we've known each other for two and a half years? Yes. Yeah. No. No. Three years. Three. August of 2018. August 2018. Soccer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, there was one other question. Oh, no. Uh, Josie says, hi there, this is Josie. I'm the person that submitted Christy and her son Jared, Nicole's husband, to be recipients of Let's Make Art Matter. They need all your love and support. Thank you, everyone. Josie, thank you so much for submitting them. And when we saw that request come through, we knew that we needed to do this 
right away. That's why we're doing this live here. That's why you guys had such short notice because we were just like, we need to do this and we need to do it now. This family needs love and support from us and I hope that they feel it. And I really appreciate you um, reaching out to them and reaching out to us so we can um, create for them and think about them. Um, uh, okay, okay. Okay, branches, you guys, branches. So you can just do um, little branches coming off. I didn't get too crazy here, I kept it really simple. Just make sure that you're matching the values with, ever, with whatever new branches that you're putting in. So if you're putting in you know, branches on your tree that's back here with the light value, make sure that you have a light value branch to add on there <laughs> because a dark value branch would be like, what is happening? <laughs> And Deb, you don't have to go crazy, just here and there. Deb said, Keenan, it's nearly 2 a.m. What time is acceptable to start breakfast? Oh, any time is acceptable anytime. time for breakfast. So it's actually, I've got a great 2 a.m. breakfast item snack to get you back to sleep. Okay. So a nice couple pieces of toast, one or two, maybe four eggs. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, full breakfast. Uh, pe peanut butter. Peanut butter oh. and some toast, nice and warm, oh. some water. It just, it helps me calm down and go right back to sleep. Now, are you the type of person that enjoys putting slices of banana on their toast and peanut butter? That's, no, that is an abomination. I actually, I don't think it's abomination, to be fair. Okay. Uh, I don't like banana on things. Okay, that's fair. Ever. Um, Kate says, why do you do the branches after the trees are done instead of at the same time as you do the trees? That's just because I wanted to give you guys the options of doing branches or not. I know that some people aren't super confident with adding branches on trees. And so um, I just put it on at the end because then I can leave it up to you to add it or not to add it. Okay, Debbie likes to put the banana on the toast, so well, me too. Okay. All right. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're, I think we're just about done this here. This forest a few minutes ago was a blank page. Yeah. That is awesome. Does that feel like a forest? I just love it when you can look at something and you can like feel it. Like you can, you know, standing in that field, how it would feel. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. I just, <laughs> okay. It literally came to life. What'd you say? I said it came to life. <laughs> it's absurd. Okay, let's untape this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amanda said this was her first time watching a live. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Nicole, banana on toast with peanut butter and honey. Yes. Yes. It's okay. You know... Everyone that believes that, you deserve to be happy. <laughs> you don't have to put bananas on things. <laughs> I like it. I think it's good. Look at that. Look at those clean edges we got. Okay. Well, we had so much fun painting with you. We really appreciate you tuning in, whatever you were doing. Um, if you weren't painting with us, I hope that you watch this back later and take time to paint. Um, if you guys don't know, we are sending this to... Um, uh, in memory, in love, and in support of um, Sergeant Nicole G, um, who unfortunately was killed last month um, with 12 other Americans during a um, uh, humanitarian effort to rescue Americans and some refugees. And so we are sending this to their uh, mother-in-law and the husband and just letting them know that we are thinking about them and we love them. We put the address that we are mailing this to in the comments of this. So if you need the address to mail this to them, go ahead and scroll through, find that comment so you can make a postcard for them. And of course, um, take the time to make something and also take the time to make something for someone else because I think that if we can show that there is a community of people that are thinking about someone and care about someone, it just helps people feel like they're not alone or have to deal with things by themselves because, I mean, life is hard and we all experience loss and pain and joy and, I mean, that's the human experience. And 
I think that it can, it's really easy to get lost in it and feel lonely. And I think that if we can just take the time to help someone feel like they're not alone, um, it does so much good. And when it comes to like words, I mean, I never know what to say. And it's scary because you don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to, you don't want to like offend anyone by your like love. And so what ends up happening is you don't say anything because you're embarrassed that you don't know what to say or you're afraid. And um, I think that that's why I love art so much is because it doesn't, we don't have to say anything. You can paint your love, you can paint your thoughts and your support and they can feel it just from that. It's like a safer way, I think. And so it helps us connect with each other and let people know that we're thinking about them and make sure that they know that they're not alone. So thank you so much for um, taking the time to paint with us. Um, thank you for this strong community that we have built because it would not be what it is without you and the effort that you put into it and you guys being brave and trying something new and you know like painting something is scary sharing what you're painting is scarier and giving that as a gift is like the ultimate like act it's like the epitome of vulnerability it is terrifying um, but we're doing it together and when you have a community together it, you know courage is contagious so take the time learn something new put yourself out there um, you guys are wonderful and uh, we will see you guys later thanks Keenan. thank you bye everybody